Well, France being a beautiful part of the world and it being spring, I get to visit some pretty amazing places. None more so than this apiary, which is heart, in the heart of the Brittany countryside, surrounded by beautiful trees and amazing forage for bees. But what I'm on now is, is the second tour after the harvest, the spring harvest of all the apiaries because basically um, I am uh, having to go through all my colonies hurriedly because they are starting to swarm and that's just what I didn't want. But my theory is on this. My theory is that bees are really going on what's happened in the previous two weeks build up. And that's what I find here. And it's an interesting thing because people say, what is your swarm control, Richard? What do you do to stop swarming? Well, um, my main swarm control is giving the bees space and, but preempting that. So when I know my flows, because I know my nectar flows, I know when to give them space. And in Brittany now, I've been chatting with my colleague and we have come to the conclusion that we, in the spring, when this flow starts, you just put two supers on straight away, because otherwise your bees will go. And that gives you about a week to get back into your colonies. It's not that they're gonna fill those two supers in a week, it's the fact you've given them the excess space. And the problem is, if you don't give them the excess space, they will just go. So today I've found uh, an apiary very near here. I've got a twin apiary. This apiary and the one up the road are only, um, uh, about 800 meters apart, but it's a huge area of forage they've got and lots of waterways and lots of different trees and lime trees, um, chestnut, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, um, I have to share these two apiaries. Well, in other words, they have to be close to each other to have a minimum of 24 hives in for my, for my pollination contract I do with the, with the state of France. That's one of the requirements. So I'm basically, uh, I've just done the other apiary and I've been there and uh, four of the colonies that I didn't make a spring, spring split from have swarmed. So now I'm having to sort that mess out and it, it's a mess. The four hives are a mess. Uh, there are a lot of drones, there's not many worker bees. There's brood hatching, which is good, but I've been out and, and seen any, any other virgins. I think the virgins have gone. One nice big swarm in the tree, which is obviously disappointing. But I've come out today completely organised. Well, believe it or not, I am organised. I'll show you what I've got in the truck. I've got a load of supers ready. Now, supers are your space. If you see a Conley that's full of bees in the top super, in the only super it's housed, and the underneath is making cells, open cups, with, with or without eggs, you want to stick an extra super on between the top of the brood nest and the first super that's there already. That's going to give you some... Um, that's going to give you some, uh, a little bit of play in, in, in time. It just might buy you a bit of time, but as I say, on here, we seem to have this delay. And what happens is now we've got a dearth and the dearth will suppress the bees a bit. But we just need to make sure that any cells that are uh, made are um, going to be um, just knocked off or put back. And that should be OK. But obviously, if you've got closed cells, you're going to have to do a nuke. And I've got nukes in me so that if I have to, so if I have to make a split, I can. And I've got spare foundation, I've got queen excluders, new queen excluders, I've got feeders, I've got syrup. So the problem is as well, the bees are so prolific here and they are so, the buckfast we try and use most of the time in the hybrids are so prolific and they don't store much honey. And often you'll find a colony with 10, 10 frames Two of them will be the end frames, but they haven't stored any honey in for some reason. And the rest will be just brood, but there's nothing in the arch on top of the, uh, the arch above the bees that they usually keep for honey doesn't exist. It's just brood. And you look at this and you're going like, well, how can this be like this? And it's just the fact they're just, they are al almost the ultimate bee that, that produces loads and loads and loads of brood. But that has the other effect of giving you more work and almost Incre perhaps increases the chance of swarming. It's getting the balance in the middle somewhere, you know. So I'm 
so on my so on my second apiary visit i've done the other one over there which was okay um overall even though the colonies had swarmed i've got bees in boxes still in other words the ones that swarmed hadn't lost all their bees and i've got queens ready i'm going to give them a couple of days now we've got two weeks before our main flow starts i'm going to give them a couple of days to settle down i'll go back in in two days and just put a virgin queen in i'm not going to bother putting um uh, a queen under a push engage because basically I haven't got many and those queens have all been used. Um, my my mini plus I make, I've just been split again. That was done uh, three days ago. I've made another 21 up uh, with what I had left. Uh, my colleague, he took a load because he, he lost a lot of bees this winter as well. So I'm basically at the point now where I've got no more hives to put out because the hives that are out are gonna give me honey, theoretically, because they'd be big enough but the hives I've got left aren't big enough to split. So I'm kind of at a kind of point where there's not much more I can do until everything's grown a bit more. So I'm just going around using my time, going through every single colony, checking there's no queen cells, checking everything I can, feeding if necessary, because there is no food around, but most colonies have plenty of food. It's just the ones or twos, like I say, that in one apiary that are, um, that are um, you know, just, too much brood but then i what i do sometimes if i've actually moved um about 24 hives out two nights ago to to the last spaces of the apiaries and as i said just now they're the ones that will give me honey so they're the ones i prepared in my home apiary that i built up with brood from other colonies but there was still a bit of space in each one of those generally one or two frames not filled so what i've done is if i found a colony in my strong apiaries i've taken that frame of brood or the best frame of brood taken it out and given it to my other ones I've just brought in because they're never going to swarm at the moment they are way off swarming so you can take some from the stronger give to the weaker and that's obviously called balancing out and it's a really good way of evening out your apiary strength because you do not want really strong ones going to swarm because the really strong ones if you have weak ones they'll prey on the weak ones if they become too weak and the weak ones then will rise up and be able to to take to, to defend themselves and to take a good amount of honey for you, even though at the start they seemed a bit weak. Our flow is about to start in two weeks. It'll be around for about four weeks and we've now got, as you can see, sunny, dry weather, and there's probably nothing more we're gonna have after that. It looks like, at the moment, there's high pressure stabilized again, which means no rain, which means generally nice weather, and it means if we do get calm weather, we should have a good chestnut flow just on bramble but it means that because it's dry now there won't be much around after that it'll just drop like a curtain there'll be nothing so we'll be looking at um feeding and all that late summer which doesn't matter because we can organize that we can get on with that but it's all about being um uh being kind of using the moment looking at where you are exactly in the bees annual life cycle using the knowledge you have from your previous few years to kind of know what your um, bees are going to do. Because when that flow hits, we don't actually have much swarming with them with the main flow in the summer because the bees kind of know that it's their last chance to fill up with what they've got. And all our swarming comes and it stops about now. So I'm just kind of mopping up the last uh, colonies that are thinking about going, but I've actually found, saying this, I've actually found colonies that are that have had queen cells. I've got the original queen in, she's still marked with the original queen I put in last year. She, she was thought about swarming and now they've torn the cells down and the queen's still in there. And it shows that they are reacting to the environment that's outside. And as I said, it's like in this area as well, which has got the highest swarming amount, we had late apple trees and late cider apple trees, which is the last thing to bloom around here. So it just proves the point that you've got to be on the ball and know what your flows are. Uh, everywhere else I've been yesterday was super duper, really strong colonies. I've actually had to put extra supers on, as I said just before, on top of colonies that had just loads of bees in the supers and nothing else. Because when that flow hits, they will go bang. They will want that space. And you know they're going to easily fill two supers. So why not put another one on now? They've got plenty of bees. They've got loads of room inside to move around, but they've given them a little bit more room. So when that flow hits, they can just fill away. You come along and assess it and go, right, is that first super full? Have we got one, two or three weeks left of the flow technically? What's the weather going to be doing? Is it worth putting your next super on now? And if we're in the first week and I've already filled a super and there's another one on top they're starting to fill, I will put a third super on then because I know they've got plenty of time to fill it and it stops, it doesn't stop that momentum. You just want to keep those bees going and you don't want to break that momentum. 
So I'm going to go into the apiary here now, which is just over here. And we're going to, um, just through there, I'm going to go and do all these hives. Um, if I can get the camera to stay still, because I've brought the wrong tripod with me. But we've got a load of hives in there, and we're going to go through a lot of them and see what they need doing. I won't go through them all with you, but I'll just go through a couple, and you can see what I'm on about, about space. And you, you, It just gives you a bit of a an idea about how I manage my bees and how I do my swarm control. Because there's no hard and fast rule, you know. Um, there's so many methods of swarm control, and one of them is the classic uh, method where you put you take a lot of the brood out the bottom and you put another box on the top, another brood box, and you make a double brood. We can't do that here because we don't have the, the brood boxes spare. We don't have the... A lot of the brood boxes you do that with, for example, are a lot lighter and a lot smaller. So we just have a dad on 10 frame. And there is good evidence to say that perhaps a 12 framed brood box would work better for us. But then in the winter, you've got this problem where your bees are kicking around on... Um, on, on, on a huge box, you know, with a smaller a smaller amount of bees. Yes, you could partition off, I agree with that. But then when you come to the summer, you've got to use an adapter. So when you put your super on the existing 12 frame nuke, 12 frame box, you have to partition off the side so that you don't get bees flying out the top of the hive because you're, you're two frames bigger. It's all about having to use what you've got that actually works because in reality, I see a lot of people buying different hives and everything, but in reality, you've got to use what, what is the most economical for everything? It might not be the best. It's you've got to use what you have with your situation. And that's what I found. My colleague told me when I first started, he said, I use, he used his, used to use Voirno, V-O-I-R-N-O-T, it's actually spelt. And it's a French name. And it, there's no doubt the bees are about 30% better overall all year round in this hive because it's a deeper box. And the, you can use the, the Daydon uh, supers on top so it's the same square, but it's a deeper box. And that is proven to have better. But the problem is no one wants to buy swarms or, or nukes on Voano. No one. And they're so difficult to manage because you can't buy the frames. You've got to make them yourself. And it's, it's just so easy to use a system that everyone else wants. So in France, the system is Daydon. And everyone buys frames on Daydon. So everyone sells nukes on Daydon. It's just standard stuff. So that's what I'm getting at. You have to use what you have, you know, in your area. But let's go and do some work on the bees and stop all this yapping. So I've just done all the other half of this. And I've got a, a couple of queenless colonies that I've just added brood to. Well, before I come back and check them again and add, add a virgin. Um, that's all part of beekeeping. And that's the most frustrating thing this time of year when you're just about to get a flower and the, the colony for no reason goes queenless. And you're like, what the, you know? But, you know, you've got to be positive, onwards and upwards. I've got queens, just got to come back and sort that out. So this is what I show, these couple are, I think, pretty strong. They're going to need extra supers on, but I'll show you what we're looking at when I look inside. But a lot of orientation flights going on next north, and you can see there's suddenly a, literally a hive of activity. This hasn't got as many bees in as I thought, but that's fine. There's bees in the super, they're just not filling it up with anything. So let's have a look underneath. This is exactly what I'm checking exactly what I'm doing at the moment. Take off the queen excluder. I like to get them completely off. This colony is way smaller than I wanted to see. I do use smoke just to get the bees off the top frames, you know? So let's find out why this colony is smaller than it should be. Well, we've got brood, that's for a start. And we've got eggs. Okay, this whole frame is full of eggs. You've got to be, um, I'm kind of like to look at my beekeeping as a, I go down in categories. If I've got eggs, I'm like, well, okay, at least there's a queen there for now. So these are quite dark bees. These aren't my usual kind of buckfars, but the brood pattern is beautiful. So they're healthy, they're strong. There's eggs in every cell. This just might have been late to get going, you know? But these were new colonies this spring. Should have been strong enough. They, haven't, they have moved this side by looking at it rather than that side. Let's have a look at this frame. They're fairly calm. I'm not wearing gloves. That's a fairly good frame. See, all this brood is about to hatch out. That's good, you know? I'm fairly happy with that. There is bees in the super. 
they've got room underneath they've got room in the super so this is the this is the example where there's nothing to really do i mean look at that brood there coming i mean you see what i mean that's all that's going to hatch just before the flow and then when the flow's on those bees there will be, will be becoming work um forager bees so this isn't too bad you know there's a lot of a lot of brood to hatch Obviously no sign of swarming because the colony is not that strong. There's some drone here. That's fine. This frame, I think, has been adapted to be drone. I don't know why it's not the one I put in. Maybe it's the drone frame got mixed up. Could have been. I'm going to move this to the number two position because I don't like this in the middle of the brood nest. It should be number two. Let's move this over. Okay, that's in the right place now where it should be normally in a hive you'd see it in number two place more brood hatching you know this is good i'm not when i'm looking for my inspections i'm not looking for the queen because if you'd spend hours looking for queens you know you'd, you'd go oh where's she gone she's done see if you see eggs this time of year that's good enough and strong brood you waste your time don't queen hunt let's just check the, the colony the frame the other side See what that's looking like. I think they're filling that one out as well. Full of brood. Look at that. So there's a lot of brood to hatch here. So this colony is still fine, even though initially it didn't look that strong. There's brood and eggs every place. That's fine. Now let's check the weight. Is there any honey in this? It's enough. I know what's coming. I know we've got food around. It's not too dry at the moment. I have just fed one colony over there because it was basically very, very light and a lot of brood and not much stores. But this is okay. I know it's got enough to last it for two weeks and I'm sure there'll be a bit of flour around for the next two weeks. So I'm gonna leave that there. The super goes back on. I put a super on all these initially. There's bees in the super. You can see there through the cover that goes back on nothing more we can do with that i've seen there's a queen there's bees there's eggs there's larvae there's plenty of foraging going on there's food all i can do now is leave that and wait till it does its bit with the flow and hope it fills up with honey and then after the flow i'll be taking the split from this so it's nearly ready to take a split from but i just want the bees to come up now into the super so but there's still enough room in the super so there's bees in the middle there that's fine if there was like four or five frames of bees i'd be like mm, with that amount of brood underneath i want to give them more space but i don't have to at the moment there's plenty of room you don't have to worry this is what it's all about it's knowing what you can do and what you should do and you know we're all changing all the time because every area is different you know some some people would look at this and go oh you've got way too much space there for us it's not it's the summer it's warm the bees are growing, all that brood inside is going to be hatching out and that's going to want to go somewhere when it's not doing anything and you give it a super. If it was already on six frames of six frames of the super, I would give it another super because when that flow hits, bang. But that flow hits now, it'll still be fine. I'll be back within a week and I'll assess it then and I'll see how that does then. See, this really annoys me. This is me in a rush. I hate it when my queen excluders stick out from one side. It's, it's not a problem. There's no way the queen would have got up because there's enough overlapping in the side, but it just, I just don't like that. So this is another strong, what I think is a strong colony. I've just moved one across. Let's have a look in this one. Nice lot of bees. Still plenty of room. Three, three frames of bees in the super. There's no honey on these. These are just space for the bees to go. You know, there's no honey there or a tiny bit. Okay, which is fine. So we're going to take the super off. That's got plenty of space again already. Take the super off. I often put it on a, on the floor or on an upturned roof next door. It's brilliant to do that. So we've got already on. I've got bees in the suit. I'm looking at this straight away. <laughs> does this look a normal colony? Yes, it does. So we'll lift off this big queen excluder. There's fairly nice bees. There's space down in here. Okay. I could boost this colony. But I don't think I'm going to need to because I think they're going to boost it themselves. Okay. So let's just move across to where I think there's going to be some action. Okay, 
we've got a drony frame here. There's drone on the top. Eggs and larvae, beautiful. As soon as you see that, and if you can see those larvae glinting in the sun, look, all that milky white raw jelly. That's what you want to see. As soon as you see that, you know you're fine. But this frame is light. There's nothing on it. I might have to feed this colony. Have a look in here. More brood, more larvae, beautiful. Not a problem, everything great. And those queen cells. Mm, I'm a bit worried about the stores in this colony. It's a bit light on stores, and if I give it a boost now with some honey or some nectar, that's what we're looking at. You see, all that's going to use resources. That's not a bad frame of brood. I've got a lot of that in a lot of colonies, both sides. What you should be seeing this time of year. No queen cups, nothing. Great, the colony's doing awesome. They'll give me honey. But will it survive well, long enough? Because what happens is, you look at that colony, you think, great, there's plenty of food in that. You know, can it? It will just be, oh, the nectar flows in two weeks. But you don't want it struggling for the first week of the nectar flow. You want it absolutely booming. So I'm going to give this a feed. Give it four or five litres, well, maybe two litres of syrup I've got with me. Same here, loads of brood. We've got a cup, empty. There's larvae on every frame and eggs on every frame, which is fine. The queen's good. I just think they're missing a lot of, uh, a lot of nectar, you know? So that's all about to change, but the problem is the more bees you have, the more food you need. The food can be supplied. Look, there's even, even brood on this frame. Frame number eight, that's good. And eggs as well. Eggs all over here. So I'm happy with this, but there's just no food in this whatsoever. So this gets a feed. So what do you do with your super when you've got this? If there's no honey in it? Good question. No honey in it. You shake out the bees. Put them back into the hive for now. You could just leave this on the side. Well, there is a little bit of honey in there. I don't, maybe no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to need to feed this now. Okay, I've changed my mind. There is a bit of honey in that super. Enough for now. So I'll I'll mark this colony. Check for feed. But I know there's a little bit of honey in that super now, and that'll be enough to keep it going. I'll be back in less than a week to check this all again. But from what I know about this area, there is nectar around. There's bramble just about starting to flower, some early bramble, and it's going to be warm weather. So there'll be, there'll be the flow, whatever there is, will be on. So I don't need to do anything with this now and just check it for feed. Maybe in four or five days, come past and just lift it up. And there's still a little bit of weight there, but if, it, if there was no honey in the super, as I just said, I would have fed it. So that super can go back on, gives them space. All that brood's going to hatch out and suddenly bang, it'll be flooded in nectar and I want them to know where the space is up in top. There's no sign of any real swarming in this whole of this apiary. We've actually had a couple of problems with, as I said before, with queenless colony, so I've got to sort that out. But it's all good. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically going through every colony like that, assessing, it's a lot of work, but you know when you've left that colony, it's been checked properly. You know that it's been uh, assessed and checked and seen that its needs have been catered for. Does it have brood? Does it have eggs? Does it have larvae? Is there a laying queen? My flow is coming. I have to get that colony in its peak for two weeks time because when that flow hits, I want it to perform. I won't get it right on everything. I won't be able to do it all, but I just do the best I can. And if you work hard, get your head down, get on with things, you just turn around like last year and suddenly find you've got six, seven barrels of honey. And that should happen this year. I can't guarantee it, I just hope so. I'm not counting any chickens before they're hatched, but you, you just kind of follow a, a, a basic rule of, you know, the, going into a colony, check it, has it got room? Does it need room? Does it need feed? And when that flow hits, hopefully you'll end up with a good nectar flow at the end of it.
So anyway, whatever you're doing, um, I'll catch you again soon and uh, enjoy your bees. Bye for now.